Hi and welcome back. So over the four years I've been running the channel, I've had quite a lot of comments in the YouTube video comment section about the morals and the ethics of lifespan extension. Indeed, when I was back in the Middle East, uh, I used to have lots of long conversations about the ethics and the morals uh, that centre around lifespan extension. So there's obviously the religious side, but in this video, let's cover some of the moral and the ethical issues when it comes to lifespan extension. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Julian Coplin and Christopher Gingle and published in The Conversation, where they cover important moral and ethical questions about the possibility of living forever. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Sam Altman, the chief executive of OpenAI, recently invested 180 million US dollars into Retro Biosciences, a company seeking to extend human lifespans by 10 healthy years. One way it plans to achieve this is by rejuvenating blood. The idea is based on studies that found old mice showed signs of reversed aging when given the blood of young mice. Others supporting these life extension efforts include PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and Google co-founder Larry Page. Now, the first question they raise is scientific. Could these technologies actually work? Well, the jury is still out and there are grounds for both optimism and obviously scepticism. The second question is just as important. Even if lifespan extension was feasible, would it really be ethical? Let's look at some ethical arguments against lifespan extension and also why trying to live forever might not actually be worth it. Now, one may argue that lifespan extension merely pushes back the inevitable in that we are all going to die. So lifespan extension will only be temporary. A lifespan extension of 10 years is akin to saving a drowning swimmer, only for them to die in a traffic accident 10 years later. Although we may be sad about their eventual death, we'd still be glad we saved them. The same is true of conventional medicine. Let's say a doctor cures someone of cancer. The patient will eventually die of something else. But that doesn't necessarily mean the doctor or the patient regret being saved from cancer to begin with. It's also worth taking a longer term view of where lifespan extension research could actually lead us. In the most optimistic scenarios put forth by some experts, they say even modest short term gains could help people potentially add decades or even centuries to their life, since the benefits of each intervention could actually cascade. For example, each year, of life would increase the likelihood of surviving until the next significant medical breakthrough. Now, many have argued against lifespan extension on ethical grounds, saying they wouldn't use these technologies anyway. But why is this the case? One view is that a very long life might actually be undesirable. Philosopher Bernard Williams said life is made valuable through the satisfaction of what he calls categorical desires, desires that give us a reason to actually want to live. Williams thinks that these desires relate to major life projects, such as raising a child or writing a novel. He worries that given a long enough life, we will run out of these projects and, as a consequence, immortality would become tedious. Some philosophers, on the other hand, point out that human memories are fallible and certain desires could resurface as we forget our earlier experiences. Others emphasize that our categorical desires evolve around our life experiences and they reshape our interests and might continue to do so over the course of a very long life. In either case, our categorical desires and hence our reason for living would not be exhausted over a very long life. Even if immortality did get tedious, this wouldn't count against modest lifespan extensions. Many would argue that 80 something isn't long enough 
to explore one's full potential. Maybe 100 or even 120 would be an acceptable length for an extension of lifespan. Another worry regarding lifespan extension technologies is egalitarian. These technologies will no doubt be expensive. It seems unjust for Silicon Valley billionaires to be able to celebrate their 150th birthdays while the rest of us die, mostly in our 70s and in our 80s. This objection seems convincing as most people support interventions that promote health equality, such as universal health care. But there is an important nuance to reflect on here. Consider that universal healthcare systems promote equality by improving the situation for those who aren't well off. But on the other hand, preventing the development of lifespan extension technologies could worsen the situation for those who are well off. The ethical desirability of equality based on leveling down is unclear. Generally, the poorest are twice as likely to die before the age of 75 than the richest. Yet, few people would argue that we should stop developing technologies to improve the health of those who are already over the age of 75, regardless of their income or of their social status. Moreover, the price of lifespan extension technologies would more than likely eventually come down over time. All that being said, there may be one other serious ethical objection that applies to extreme cases of life extension. If humans routinely lived very long lives, this could reduce how adaptable our population is and lead to social stagnation. Even modest increases in life expectancy would radically increase the size of the population. To avoid overpopulation, we may need to reduce birth rates which would drastically slow our generational turnover. Let's stick with social stagnation and postulate that this could be incredibly harmful to society because it may increase our vulnerability to extinction threats. It could also jeopardize individual well-being and impede moral advancement. Many fields benefit from a regular influx of young minds coming in and building on the work of their predecessors. And even if the brains of these older scientists did remain sharp, their confirmation bias, this being a tendency to seek out and interpret information in ways that confirms their prior beliefs, could actually slow down the uptake of new and important scientific theories. Moral beliefs are also prone to confirmational bias. In a world of extended lifespans, individuals whose moral views were set way back in their youth, perhaps more than 100 years ago, will still remain in positions of power. It seems likely that some society's moral codes are flawed, at least in some respects. After all, we think that past societies were catastrophically mistaken in theirs, such as when they endorsed slavery or punished PTSD, sometimes with execution. Slowing generational turnover could delay the point at which we recognise, and then we start to fix our own moral catastrophes, especially those we cannot yet foresee. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, and I hope you found it thought-provoking too. This is a subject that will have many, many theories, but at present very little scientific data, so something we'll all be able to talk about for a long time to come. Let's quickly revisit the modest lifespan extension model. Um, if 80 is too young, what do you consider an acceptable extension to lifespan, let's say anything over 100 years old, that will allow you to reach all of the life goals that you've set yourself now, but without having something like a negative effect on potential birth rates? Let me know what you think in the comment section of the YouTube video.